Um, so, good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you very much for being here. Uh, my name is Hakan Aksungur. I'm the co-founder of the Laranas USA, uh, based in USA. Um, it's a great honor to be here amongst you. Um, as Hastin mentioned already, our topic is understanding the travel preferences of elite travelers. And for the for the audience, I have four professionals here with me. Uh, Mr. Uh, I cannot see the Zakir actually. Uh, Mr. Mehmet Ardo, the Golden Bay Tour. Uh, Mr. David Manix, Arcadia uh, Explanations, and Mr. Simon Gozzi, the Wonders. Um, so I'm sure we have a tight shuttle. So let me start with Mr. Uh, Ardo. Um, uh, what are the leading brands doing right when it comes to luxury tourism? Uh, what do you do to catch elite travelers, Mehmet? So, uh, thank you for the question. Actually, uh, everybody is running after the elite traveler in the world. So, uh, it looks the maybe the best opportunity to find and serve them, but it's not that easy actually because they request so many uh, different things than the normal travel uh, request. And, uh, what actually we are doing? The most important is to to know our customer. Maybe this is our. Move. Uh, is talking between us and saying to him that you have to know your, your customers, then we can easily understand the needs. Uh, the request of hand to the uh, to the other countries or to the geography. So uh, from far east can be was totally different things than somebody living in, in the west side. Uh, the only thing I can say, uh, the elite traveler, the trend on the elite traveler is changing. Now. Uh, before it was first class trips, uh, five or six star accommodation, uh, uh, or luxury cars. We are talking more about the uh, new experience. Everybody say new experience, but the uh, new experience is not only the new destination to visit. Uh, if you understand better your customer, you can serve them sometimes in a very simple way, in a very simple place, a huge satisfaction about their travel. So uh, the big brands uh, now are investing on the technology side because without the technology, uh, it's difficult to bring the content and know all the destination. But on the other side, the human touch is still very important for the elite traveler because they would like to to ask question, discuss, and uh, see what you are doing, uh, how much you know about the destination, etc. Uh, so the the brands also, uh, other than investing on the technology, they also know uh, and specialize on some new product. Let's say it could be destination, it could be experience, it could be food or some other things. Uh, but uh, this experience now is much more important than the name of the, of the destination, uh, especially if we talk, for example, uh, if we ask some, someone in the street uh, to tell us the, some popular destination, let's say in Europe, uh, they will tell us Barcelona, Paris, Italy, etc. Uh, but I think that uh, the luxury traveler or the elite traveler, they are not looking for that because it's very crowded, all those destinations. Everybody is going there. So they are looking totally different things. And to catch those travelers, uh, we are collaborating with the uh, land service provider. We are collaborating 
sometimes with the food organizations. Uh, we are collaborating with the private jet companies or uh, five star, six star uh, airlines uh, to to get availability for our customer. And uh, the most important thing, as I mentioned, our motto is know your customer, know the needs of our customer, because even in corporate business, corporate area, the, the request of the salesman can be totally different uh, than a manager or director. Even they are in the same company, in the same travel policy, same limits, same culture. So uh, when we talk about huge budget, then the request can vary uh, hugely. And that's why if we know our customer, then we, we are one step ahead uh, from our competitors. That's very correct, Mr. Mehmet. Uh, we have to know our customers. So I know you for like 15 years, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Um, so, um, Mr. Mannix, um, next question is for you. Um, the coronavirus crisis uh, has become a luxury milestone. After crisis, it will be discovered that money is not everything. Uh, the question of does buying make us happy, it turns out that people don't want to pay for commodities, um, expect, except my wife, I can say, but uh, they want to pay for mentality and spiritually satisfying experiences. So, what should travel agencies do to reach their luxury destination? Thanks, Hakan. Yes, um, that question of whether buying makes us happy, um, I guess we shouldn't be surprised, but um, there was a paper done by a group of psychologists a couple of years ago, which actually showed to all of us that experiential purchases um, uh, have more enduring happiness for people than material purposes. So, I guess it's pretty obvious for us in travel then that what we should be doing is emphasizing those experiences, but not only that, but just the joy that they provide and how they make our clients feel, as opposed to what maybe Mehmet was saying, just the destination itself, but let's emphasize the experiences. But I, I would also say in the luxury sector, there seems to be a big growing trend to, to self-actualization and to fulfillment. You know, people want to grow um, and have these amazing experiences while they travel. So in, in, in my opinion, you know, sitting on a beach in Thailand for a week um, won't really um, hit those people that want that type of fulfillment. But being in a, in a remote tribe on the Omo River in Ethiopia, that's probably going to set people up for these life-changing experiences that they're looking for. So in other words, I think it's our responsibility as travel companies to provide innovation in our itinerary planning and not just give very vanilla product. The other point I would make is that I think the new trend in, in, in luxury travel is more about access. So everyone used to talk about authentic travel a few years ago, but authentic travel, I think, is we can all get it. It's, it's easily, easily gotten no matter where you look on the internet. But now having that access, that ultra rich people who are, are traveling, our clients, they want those unique and exclusive experiences. They want access and personal services. And I'll give you an example from my own company, Arcadia Expeditions. We are running an expedition to Central Asia, and when we're in Uzbekistan, we are going up into the mountains and we are curating a special event um, of this old, ancient Silk Road war game called Buskazi, and it's where hundreds of horsemen get together, and they actually used to practice up in the mountains for, for war, and they pass around the carcass of a goat, um, and they play this game over a couple of hours. Now, my business is setting up a special uh, Buskazi match up in the remote mountains of Uzbekistan just for my small group of 12 people. This is a very you know, unique experience that they can go home and tell everybody about. Um, and you know, it just takes a lot of time and, and effort and, and indeed money to set up. But this is exactly what those elite people are looking for. They want these unique experiences that no one else can have. So really, it's our job to facilitate that. Um, and lastly, I would say, often the best experiences for these type of people are outside of their comfort zone. So we, as travel professionals, should be gently taking our clients by the hand and taking them out of their comfort zone because that's where the best stuff is. Um, and they can be in their comfort zone by themselves, but the, the value add we have 
is grabbing them by the hand and taking them out of their comfort zone during the trip and bringing them back. That's where we can, we can add some value to these people. Thank you, David. Um, let me ask the Simon then. Um, in City Wonders, you offer an array of products for every price range, including for elite travelers. Um, what steps do you take to create a product for elite travelers? Uh, thank you, Pam. So, as you said, we, we are not a luxury brand. We, we have a, a wide range of products from entry level to more uh, unique and exclusive. Uh, when, uh, when we want to create something on our top uh, end in the range, uh, something that's incredibly unique, that can uh, really attract the most savvy uh, travelers that uh, maybe have been at destination before, but they want to experience in a very unique way, we, we, we start thinking about what what could be the best experience possible. To take a step back, you know, we actually do work in those destinations that Mehmet, you referred like Paris, uh, uh, Rome, London, the top European uh, cities. And we, we always, uh, uh, we, we, so we don't do remote uh, travel in, in, uh, in remote parts of the world. But we make sure that in, on those destinations, you can really experience them at different levels. So we start with the, the, the say, entry level products so that are still high quality products with a group of, let's say, of 20 people. And from there, we start scaling it up, making it every time more exclusive, making a smaller group, making it private, making it go outside of the office, of, of the working hours when maybe the attraction is closed, or even beyond by opening areas that are normally close to the public. So what we have seen is that our, uh, our customer, our, uh, the highest spending customers for us is not always uh, the the ultra rich it's 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 a detached from luxury sometimes it's about people that want to uh, invest in the, the the best experience possible and many times are people that have been in the destination before and have seen it in a let's say an average way and now they want to come back and do something completely unique to give you an example that probably compares to uh, what david was saying before uh, we've been running in the last year and a half the product at the Vatican Museums, where you arrive at 6 a.m. in the morning when the museum is completely closed, and the clavigero, that's the guy that actually opens the, the museum, so it's, a, it's an important role within the Vatican, he meets you at the entrance at 6 o'clock, it's pitch dark, okay? It's an, this is for a small group of about 12 people. He meets you at the entrance, he opens the museums next to you, you enter with him, the museums are closed. It starts opening, uh, turning on the lights in all the rooms until it takes you in the Sistine Chapel. And think about this, Akari. You are walking through the museums that are completely dark. They are usually overcrowded. And and he takes you to the Sistine Chapel. You enter in the Sistine Chapel that's pitch black, and then suddenly he turns on the lights, and here you are in the middle of Sistine Chapel by yourself, lighting up. So. Again, what we are seeing is that people are looking more and more for these experiences that are actually the one that are going to create the long-lasting memories, that they are going to go back and tell their friends what they did. You know, as again, referring to David, they are going to come back from that trip and probably they are not going to say or hand pictures about the hotel rooms where they stay. They are going to tell everybody the incredible experience that they had. Right, so it's becoming uh, the the most sophisticated travelers are, uh, uh, from my point of view, are spending more and more money within the experience that it's unique, that it makes uh, uh, it different from everything else. Uh, that it's something that they can even go back and tell everybody. And pardon my thing, brag about it with everybody. That's something that's not accessible to everyone. So it's about the uniqueness of this and uh, of these uh, products, and we do the same. For example, in, uh, in, uh, in, in London, we have an uh, um, uh, early morning tour of the uh, Tower of London with the opening ceremony. We have a private defeater that takes you there when nobody's there. So it's, it's about making it as special as possible. And for our type of product, that, that are all, let's say, at most of them are attraction based around big attractions, about uh, avoiding the crowds, accessing areas that normally. Uh, are not uh, uh, open to the public, 
and uh, maybe actually participating in ceremonies that are usually private and not open to everyone. Thank you, Simone. Thank you very much. And let's continue with Mr. Mehmet again. Um, it's no longer uh, luxuries to drive very expensive cars uh, to wear brands with big logos or to wear gold-plated watches. After the economic crisis, the rich began to spend money on experience instead of luxuries purchasing. Uh, how do you feel about that? Uh, actually, let's see what, how, or how the travel can be created first of all because the if we see the meaning of the travel or, or the conditions uh, how people so we will understand better uh, for example i think that we uh, there is three different conditions has to match in the same time if somebody can travel somewhere it could be or international first they need time. Secondly, they need money. And third, they have to get, so if I am annoying here, I can travel. But I also have to money, and I also have to, to have time, actually. If there is a missing on these three conditions, that be realized. So let's say, okay, we have these three conditions, and then meaning of elite travel so actually a little bit on the web what means elite travel or elite travel uh, every different area of the travel industry has actually different meanings about that for example the uh, the airlines consider the frequently flyers as the elite members once they fly more than i don't know 10 times 20 times a year so the hotelier or the hotel chains, they consider how many times they stay in their hotel. Some of them, they, how many times they stay in a suite or higher category in the hotels. So, uh, and the, the common uh, actually uh, decision about the elite travelers is that this is approximately correspond 12 percent of the travel industry so this is important actually uh, if we are talking about 12 percent so in every aspect there is a gap and there is some opportunities to sell something to them or to collaborate with them uh, so i think that for the moment everybody has already left the brand loyalty or they already forget it so it's not uh, actually an important issue because there is the pandemic some economic crisis so many negativity uh, affecting the business and the most important thing it's not under our control so we as a tourist or travel agencies or see we are trying to handle the situation under these circumstances that's why for the elite travel i think they also changed a little bit in this aspect so uh, for me the next uh, how can i say uh, era or period about the elite traveler will be approximately in six or seven different topics uh, first of all they actually they are looking for authentic local experience so i agree that uh, with simone because yes in venice in italy or in paris also there are still some deeper experience to discover uh, but on the other side they also regard a little bit remote so uh, that's why the authentic local experience is very very important uh, the elite traveler they have so many friends everywhere or they had some consultancy from the agencies or in the web reading the blogs etc and today 
it's for them to go a city, discover the city, second or third or fourth time, discover in more deeply, be in the local places, in places, because the most important thing, we are spending money, okay, we are, we are traveling, uh, we see something, we, we try to understand their culture, their Everything is okay. But the most important, when we come back to them and when we invite one of our friends, while talking to them, we are sharing our experience, a bottle of wine or with some, some drinks together and say, you know, I was there and I experienced something like that. So this is the most important thing because it means that uh, the travel comes to your feel and you start to feel it you are maybe very far from that destination but you are leaving it so this is very very important i think uh, the other thing is we have to be very human centered we have to provide them very human centered technology with our online booking tools or the websites etc because the luxury traveler, regarding some statistics, they are not spending that much time to make some search about their next trip because they already know what they want and they they needs are very well. So that's why if we can provide the human-centered technology and help them to find the right product, then it can be a good opportunity for us. Uh, on the other side, I believe that uh, after the pandemic, the, uh, I mean, commemorating some special events can be a good opportunity for the tour operator or for the for the travel agencies, uh, especially for the luxury travel industry. So uh, I think that, for example, it can include the a birthday a special anniversary uh, that kind of things with the family with the grandparents or parents where you are not always traveling together can be a very commemorative act, uh, for everybody so it will also affect and the feelings will last very long time uh, after you come back to to your home country uh, then uh, I think that the sustainability also in our side is very important because uh, the travelers are looking on that and are really paying too much attention about the sustainability of the service provider, of the product, and of course the experience or the, the I mean, the experience they are uh, expecting. Uh, the last two things uh, is one is the food centric travel because everybody is talking about the gastronomy. Everybody is trying to open, uh, uh, offer, sorry, the gastronomic product uh, and visiting a country, uh, testing the street food or going somebody's home and cook something together with them. So it's a crazy experience and everybody loves it. Uh, and, and the only thing I can add is I still believe that the remote and uh, maybe I can say uh, under the radar destinations, like very small places in Scotland can be or on the countryside where there is uh, very less people, less crowded places, then uh, the elite traveler feel themselves more special when they visit that places or when they are a little bit more alone maybe with the uh, like-minded friends or the same category, same, uh, same kind of uh, people with a small group so I think the place on the near future and the, the elite traveler will try to, to choose that four or five topics 
mixed with the uh, with the new technology. This is what I can say. So we all have to technology yeah. then. Thank you, Mehmet. <laughs> Um, David, um, there is a growing trend in the luxury travel sector for emerging for the change to go deeper into a destination. Um, this is also linked to a greater demand for storytelling. How does Arcadia ex uh, Explanations consider this demand for greater emerging and storytelling when you create your unique itineraries? What I think we're seeing is, is a lot in the, in the luxury market, a lot more geopolitically aware travelers people who want that immersive experience and want to go and dive a bit deeper. That standard travel experience for them is really no, no longer um, good enough for a lot of these elite travellers. What they are looking for really is to, to learn something new. We can't be afraid of, of trying to teach people when they're travelling, um, but it, to still have to re remember it's a holiday. So we should be providing these intellectual exchanges when we can um, for these elite travellers. Uh, I think just touching on what both Simone and Mehmet have said there, I think it's almost like a three-legged stool, what we have to do. The, the elite traveller wants a combination of exclusive experiences like, like Simone explained so eloquently with the Sistine Chapel, um, sustainability that Mehmet talked about. We're getting more and more clients asking about our sustainability credentials and if we are a responsible business. But that third leg is, is really storytelling um, and those intellectual exchanges that I've talked about. So my entire business actually um, with Arcadia is based around storytelling. Um, the principle of my business is that um, when travellers come with my company, it's like they're coming on the making of a documentary, but without the film crew. And, and by that, what I mean is, you know, any good documentary tells a story. So actually, our, our, uh, each of our expeditions is based on a story and, and the destination comes second. Um, we have a, an expert, um, usually a, a, an academic or a journalist or, or author, who actually then goes and tells the story. We actually tell them our, our, we call them our storytellers. And like any good documentary film crew, they get access to these amazing places like these behind the scene uh, visits to museums or getting exclusive in Sudan, we're going to some archeological dig sites that no one gets access to. And we're going to meet the people who, who were digging. So really my, my concept is based on that. And if I can give an example, um, we're, we're being graciously hosted here by, um, by the people from Turkey, which is great. And I'm running an expedition to Turkey based on the life of Rumi, of the poet Rumi. Now, talking about innovation, we're, we're, we're really doing something here that no one else has ever done before. And we're going to explore in an immersive nature the story of Rumi. And so rather than just going to the main sites of, of Turkey, which a lot of people do, there's not, I hate to say it, but there's not a lot of innovation in, in Turkish tourism in, in a general sense. But, we, you know, instead of going to the normal whirling dervish show, which a lot of people go to in Istanbul and Konya, which is absolutely fine, the elite traveller doesn't want to do what everybody else is doing. So we found a, a 15th century dervish lodge in the, in the outer suburbs of Bursa, um, and we've got a private audience with um, a lot of these Sufi mystics um, who really believe in, in Rumi, and we're going to sit down with them and learn about it, and then they're going to give us a, a, a very intimate show of a, of a whirling dervish ceremony. Now, th now, that's an experience that money can't buy, um, and it's telling stories. And the best way to tell stories, in, in my humble opinion, is to get the local people telling the story uh, in tandem with someone who maybe can help them, help the group understand it. And that's where um, the, our storytellers come in. So these type of experiences of bring people I like to call it a traveling dinner party. If you have a small enough group of, of elite travelers, you can take that dinner party and travel around a destination and you bring people to the table. You bring them for dinner, you bring them for a gin and tonic and they impart their knowledge and tell the stories that way. Very well, even and the Konya is also interesting for me, you know, even when I'm in I'm Turkey, uh, it's a, good, a great adventure to be there with a unique experience, with, with a unique experience. It's very nice. Like, it's, it's, Absolutely. It's, it's, it's coming very, really good. Thank mm. you. Um, Simon, um, how do you expect the market for unique experiences and more premium products to change after this uh, pandemic, if it's over one day? Yes, <laughs> hopefully. Uh, well, I mean, uh, it's, there's no doubt that this is uh, being the most uh, disruptive uh, crisis that our industry ever went, went through. Uh, but I still, I'm very positive about it because I still think that 
uh, when we will look back a few years uh, uh, down in the line to this, we will see that this uh, great crisis was a little hiccup into the growth of tourism and travel overall. I think that our industry will recover considerably fast. And when we're talking about elite travelers, they are the ones that uh, they, they will recover faster than any other uh, segment. Okay, uh, we, we shouldn't forget that this uh, uh, this um, uh, health crisis, this pandemic, is uh, uh, bringing uh, also a financial crisis uh, uh, that's going to affect many people. Right. So there will be probably uh, uh, many individuals that will struggle for you know uh, to travel as much as they used to do in the next. Uh, few years, uh, the ones that can afford that will have, I don't want to say a word at their disposal, but, uh, you know, we've been talking a lot uh, kind of this past few years about over tourism, right? So all the big destinations uh, were overcrowded. And that's also uh, one of the reasons why people have been trying to get out of the, sometimes of the, uh, uh, the big uh, cities, the big destination to try to find places that were, uh, uh, you know, less popular. So this uh, uh, over tourism problem uh, in the next, I expect in the next uh, couple of years to don't be there anymore, right? It's, so whoever will be able to travel uh, will have a much better experience than they used to have in the last uh, few years. And that's, uh, uh, that's always going to push them to, to do it <laughs> until, I mean, again, I still believe that the over tourism problem will come back very soon, you know. Uh, I think in three, four years uh, from now, we'll probably be, be uh, uh, similar to where we were in 2019. But again, the, uh, whoever can afford to travel the next three years uh, will have amazing experiences, will be able to see uh, places that before were, again, overcrowded and, and felt that not that authentic, will be able to see them with different uh, eyes in a different way. So that will be a big push for those travelers in the next uh, 24 months. And the overall, what we also have seen that the, uh, the, within our product range, the segment that are the most premium products are the ones that are growing uh, uh, faster than the others. So even within the normal, let's say, not ultra luxury traveler, the more premium products are the ones that are, uh, have been growing, uh, let's say, uh, a few digits more than the other ones. So I am expecting this trend to continue. I don't see the pandemic really uh, uh, affecting this, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this um, let's say, this seeking of uh, uh, unique experiences. And actually, there will be probably more opportunities also because with less uh, people traveling overall, even the venues and the attraction will be more willing to create unique uh, product unique experiences to attract more uh, more um, more customers because we were also coming from a moment uh, uh, kind of where uh, the big uh, the big seats the big destinations they didn't need more tourists right so it was even difficult to work with some of these organizations to find new uh, products new way to experience them because their focus was on managing crowds not really creating new products to enhance the visit. So this pandemic can also probably shift the, the uh, focus less on quantity, more on quality of the experience. And again, uh, I think the, the, uh, our, my colleagues that they said before, uh, this pandemic also made you realize people how much everybody's missing travel. And uh, so it's gonna, be, it's gonna be a big uh, push as soon as it will be possible in the next few months. It will, there's going to be a pent up demand for, for that. So um, my, my outlook for premium products is pretty positive for the next uh, few years. OK, thank you, Simon. Um, we lost Mehmet, I guess. Uh, he disappeared. Uh, I think I have my questions, but uh, David, would you like to add something else? Yeah, I mean, uh, look, I, I agree with Simone. I think I think um, luxury travel will be the first one to come back in a lot of ways. I think uh, a lot of people with money aren't too scared of, of, of what's happening and, and want to get back out there as soon as the, the borders open. So I think we have to be ready. We have to be ready as an industry. But those of us looking after that elite market 
we do need to come back with something different. We can't just come back with this, with the same thing again and again. Um, the, the clients won't accept that. They they need they need that innovation from us. So I was, I'm pleased to hear that this panel is really in agreement with that. That um, it's those special, more immersive experiences that that we have to create as an industry and and service that, that clientele. And in my opinion, if you're not doing that, I don't I don't think you're going to survive very long um, in a post COVID world. I agree. Very well. Simon, uh, when are you uh, thinking we will be back to the business? 2019 uh, levels, you mean? Yep. Well, well, okay, so I'm expecting uh, in 2021 to have, uh, uh, we will see, uh, uh, not, not yet now, in a few months, probably by the spring, out, as soon as the vaccines will start rolling out, I think we'll start seeing uh, a trend of not going back. If you, if you, what I'm saying is that everything we will get in terms of volume or as a freedom and everything will be something that will be there to stay. Something that we haven't had in 2020, right? You know, in different countries we had a moment probably uh, around the summer. Then depends from uh, what continent we're talking about, where things go better, then they go worse again. All right. So this, this, this up and down that's uh, undermining uh, the certainty of people. But I think that from uh, probably late in the spring will arrive to a moment where everything will start getting better and everything we will gain will be there to stay. So that will really uh, uh, be the, to me, the reborn of the industry after this uh, uh, dark year. And uh, I'm expecting uh, by 20, 2023, we will be having uh, uh, now with the, the 2019 volumes. So in, I'm expecting two and a half years uh, to have that. Uh, and 2019 was a uh, was a strong strong year for travel. Uh, 2020 had all the let's say all the ingredients to be an incredible year for everybody in travel. If this did happen, so uh, but yeah, so, uh, I think in the next few months in spring we'll start seeing a stronger recovery starting. That's gonna be there to stay. That's that's my forecast. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we are almost done then. Uh, we have the time limits. Uh, thank you very much for all uh, being us, being here with us. And uh, and I also thank, want to thank you, Uzak Roto, uh, for giving this chance to, to make this meeting. And thank you very much for everything. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.